G'day cobbers, welcome back to the bush. In this video, we're checking out the Makita brushless chainsaw. Is it a decent replacement for the two stroke chainsaw you'd usually keep in your four wheel drive? You're husky or you're still? And what about the build quality? Is it gonna last? Let's get it onto the healing bench and work that out now. Now this is the XCU03 model, as you can see here. Now, this is a 36 volt chainsaw and it's provided by two standard 18 volt Makita batteries. I've got the six ampers in there at the moment. Tell how much battery charge you've got in there. You don't actually have to take the battery out. Now these ones have got indicators on the back. You can see this one's uh, completely full. Instead of having to do that there's a little handy meter up there which works really well. It stays on for about half a second though. Now to activate the chainsaw firstly you have to press the button on top there, illuminate that and when we take the cover off, so illuminate that, then hit the handle on top, and we can get the chainsaw working. So again, make sure that's illuminated. We've got the chainsaw working. All right, so we'll disable it by pulling out the batteries. Okay, so I've run the chainsaw actually quite a few times now, and I thought this was this arrangement here to bolt it down. And this of course here is plus and minus for tightening and slacking off the tension on the chain. This one's a bit loose at the moment. That's all right, just for storage. Uh, seems to work all right. I don't really have that many issues. I thought it was going to be dodgy. I thought it was going to be like the DeWalt dodgy as, and I noticed in the, in the latest model of this Makita chainsaw, they've actually uh, upgraded that. So it's just normal two bolts. I don't know if they're captive or not. I hope they are. All right, and of course, that's a 14 inch bar. This comes in 12, 14, and 16 inch. I think the 16 inch, uh, I think it'll be a little bit underpowered, but got the 14 inch, seems to work all right. And of course, you've got the chain brake, and that seems to work really well. And don't forget the oil, it seems to take about 200 mil of oil. And the great thing is, it doesn't pop out, so that's really good. Now, try to use, of course, bar oil, don't, don't go using what we all seem to use, which is used engine oil. And you also notice it's got a, a metal, uh, what I like to call a tree sticker there. Some of the brushless ones, they seem to come with uh, plastic there, which just isn't gonna last. Right here, yeah. okay, so that's pretty much the outside of it. There is a domestic model and there is an international model, so I'll put the alternate model number just below there. Uh, let's pull it apart and see what's in the guts of her. So this is a brushless motor, and what that means is it's basically an AC motor, three-phase AC motor, run off DC, and uses what's called MOSFETs, which are pretty much just electronic switches, and it pulses the MOSFETs to uh, simulate three-phase AC, so we get a lot more efficient, and there's no brushes, which is a fantastic idea. Oh right, yeah, let's pull the rest of it apart and see what's on the inside. Something under that one. All right, so let's have a look at our first piece here. Now, as you can see, this is PA6, so that's a type of plastic and GF30, so it's glass fiber reinforced plastic. So it's actually a proper uh, tool rated plastic. So that's good to see. As you can see, it's done a bit of work. And oh, there's a, there's a spring. I guarantee you I won't find where that one goes later. And we've got this one under tension too. Yeah, try and be careful, so that's part of the Brake assembly. And a little micro switch there. I assume that's what actually turns it on and off when you press the brake. So along with 
this brake which physically breaks it will have a micro switch there and there's a few more screws to let go uh, it's always dangerous okay we've got a few more screws here so we'll get into those So this is where usually the brake assembly is. Usually it's an internal brake, but obviously this time they've gone with an external brake. And there's more stuff to come out. I hope I'm remember where all these bits and pieces go. Okay, so here we have here we have the brake assembly. miss one what he knows what this does doesn't seem to be an eccentric, but it runs against there. Oh, okay, so that's a, a worm drive for the oil pump. The oil pump's just located there. So as this spins, when the motor turns, got a brass bush. Unfortunately, that's um, plastic ABS or something like that. And it drives a worm drive here, which uh, thankfully is aluminium, but I guess. And that drives the oil and pumps the oil onto the bar for you. Uh, now we're into the meat of a. Right, so we've got the oil tank here. I was saying before, 200cc oil tank. And here's the motor. Now, you can see for a DC motor, it runs a few leads. You've got three on each side. So that's actually, like I was saying before, it's a basically. AC motor running on DC. So we've got the computer down the bottom here, and the computer takes the DC and pulses the motor around here. We might look at that later, how an AC motor works in a different video. Way too much to go into here. And basically runs a motor like this from DC. So basically a three phase AC motor from DC. It's fantastic reason, it's fantastic, it's a lot more efficient. And also you don't have brushes. Now anyone who's used to old school tools will remember brushes. They're bloody horrible things. You have to replace them periodically. Okay. So uh, the connections look good. Unfortunately we've got crimps here, which well it hasn't caused me an issue thus far, but I'll tell you, I'm not a big fan of crimp connections. Got a bit of a capacitor there, no doubt to uh, clean up the the DC will provide a bit of an amperage boostage. Now uh, i got to watch out for them because that may well still be charged. Alright, so we've got our safety here and of course our main here. So this of course needs to be activated. So you need to push that in in order for the spring to go down. And here's our spring there, and you can probably see in there, it's actually got a bellow, and that's really great. So uh, it's good to see a bellow in there. Uh, that means it'll be protected from, well, lots of sawdust, really, and God knows what else I'll be sawing. Uh, probably nails in, in pieces of old timber. And of course, this is where your battery voltage and amperage comes from. Uh, so basically what happens is the DC, 36 volts, remember we've got two 18 volt batteries in series, provides power to power and voltage and amperage and whatnot to the computer using the signal from the trigger 
tells the motor how fast to turn. So this is a variable speed. Uh, the old way of varying speed, of course, is pulse width modulation. So that with pulse width modulation on a normal DC motor, it just it gives it full voltage instead of the old old way, which is providing a variable voltage to the motor. In a pulse width modulation, you're providing full voltage to the motor, but only for a certain amount of time. So your pulse, and the longer the pulse is, the faster the motor spins. Okay, so that's the guts of her. Um, it, it looks reasonably good, to be honest. When the, the, sh the moldings are sharp, there's a decent amount of reinforcement in there. It's like I said, it's tool rated plastic before. Yeah, it looks reasonably well made. So uh, now the unfortunate part is I'm going to try put this thing back together. So to give you an idea of performance of, of the unit itself, it's a mate of mine who has a steel mini boss. So it's a 14 inch mini boss, about the same size as this. It's a good saw. And we were going through the same bit of timber. We were taking off coupons. He went through the timber in 11 and a half seconds and I went through it in 14 seconds using this unit. So the performance isn't too bad. But the great thing about this saw, of course, is you don't have to carry around petrol. Now, most, most of my four-wheel driving is done in a diesel four-wheel drive, so that's an extra fuel I have to carry, which I don't have to carry with this one. And because I used to carry it internally, well, as much as I'd like the smell of two-stroke, you know, it's under toilet Chanel number no. five to me. The better three-quarters, not so much. And it got evicted, so that's why I got, a, I got an axe. But now, um, this goes in the car, the container of oil is the only liquid that operates it. I mean, you can keep running this thing off solar. So you really don't need to bring any extra fuel to run it off you. Actually, the only charger I have for these Makita batteries is a 12 volt charger. So you can easily run it off solar and uh, keep it fueled up. Rightio, better leave it on the Hilton bench. I'll go inside and hopefully it reassembles itself. Now guys, if you like this video, give it the old thumbs up. If you didn't, by all means, give it a thumbs down twice. Thanks guys, see you in the next one. Okay, so we've got power. Right there. Oh, that's not great. Oh, chain break. <laughs> and only one screw left over. And it's almost dark. I better get some light and pack up.